Joseph Barondes. Joseph Barondes, July 3rd, 1867, June 19, 1928, was the labor leader and political figure in New York City's Lower East Side Jewish community in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Known as the King of the Clockmakers, whose union he led, he carried himself like an actor, a career he had tried but failed at before he became a garment worker and union leader. In his heyday, he was in great demand at public celebrations of all sorts. As one observer of the time note, it was almost a pleasure to die, knowing that Barandes would arrange the rites. He was born in Bar, Ukraine, in Vinnytsia region near Vinnytsia and Kamenets Podolsk, former Russia, son of Rabbi Judah Samuel Barondes. He was a relative of Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis. Joseph Barondes may have spent time in Medjibosh, or perhaps he fell affiliated with the town because his wife came from there. Regardless, he was a lifelong member of the Medjibosh Lensman Shaften Society and helped support various members. He immigrated to England in 1885, where he met his wife Anna Ziffels and came to the United States in 1888. After trying out with the Romanian Opera Company in New York, he went to work in the garment trade. Three years later, Barondes helped found the Clockmakers Union. He also studied law for the time at New York University, but never finished his studies. Barondes feuded with the Socialist Labor Party, which criticized him relentlessly. He formed a brief alliance with anarchists in the labor movements, but fell out with them as well. He eventually forged warmer relationships with those socialists who left the SLP to form the Socialist Party. He star faded somewhat after his conviction for extortion in connection with the clockmaker strike in 1891, in which he was accused of accepting a check for $100 from an employer who had violated his collective bargaining agreement with the union. The accusation was probably false. The union did not have its own checking account at the time, so any payment would have had to go through the account of an individual who did. After being convicted, Barondes jumped bail to flee to Canada, returning to serve a shortened sentence only after union leaders pleaded for him to do so. He eventually recovered his former popularity, uh, however, presiding at the conference at which the International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union was founded in 1900, helping to organize the Hebrew Actors' Union 1899, this union of actors from the Yiddish theater was the country's first performing arts union, running unsuccessfully for Congress as a socialist in 1904, later becoming a Zionist, then serving on New York City Board of Education in 1911. He counted among his friends Woodrow Wilson having close ties with him long before he became president. Barondes was one of the founders of the American Jewish Congress, and in 1919 he participated in the American Jewish Congress delegation to the Paris Peace Conference leading to the Treaty of Versailles. He became active in Jewish relief efforts in the wake of pogroms in the Ukrainian Civil War of 1919-1921. In 
even when he held no particular office later in his life, but only served as the advocate for whoever sought his help, whether petitioning for small favors or protesting mistreatment by authorities. Even throughout English was his second language, Yiddish was his first, he was a brilliant orator, an elegant writer. In his later years, his calendar was full with speaking engagements. By the time of his death, in 1928, however, he no longer had any active role in Asia, the labor movement, or politics. He was remembered fondly as a pioneer in the union movement and for his gifted speaking and writing skills. Even the communist paper, Frey had gave him a respectful obituary. One of the mourners in attendance at his funeral reportedly stated that it would have been a more impressive service if Barondes had been there to deliver the eulogy. For more information on notes and sources and references, see the web page. Thank you.